And we're back with more Storm Above the Reich. This is, we're still on mission two. This is, we got past the vector phase, and now we are going to do the box formation phase, or the combat phase, I guess, I don't know what you call it. Uh, and just a recap for um, the vector phase. Uh, good news and bad news. The bad news is we lost two auxiliary fighters and went down in flames which damages our operational points for the next mission. We're going to lose two points off that. That's really bumming me out. Uh, the good news is we downed a bomber in the, uh, a straggler. And this is an inbound mission, so that was worth two victory points. Uh, the total for this uh, season is three of the ten we need. And so we're actually fine. <laughs> the, the first two times I played this, tried to get through this, I was just struggling for every little point. Now we seem to be doing a little bit better, but let's get straight into this combat. So we were delayed coming here, so the first mission uh, turn, nothing happens. And that is a rule I found out that literally nothing happens. You don't roll for cohesion, you don't roll for escorts or anything, you just skip the turn. And so here we are at turn two, and we're coming into the formation. And now, uh, because of the vector map, I did spend a tactical point so that I could come in at level rather than low. And where we're going to come in level is on the nose. How about that? Okay, everybody in on the nose. That is going to be our move. That's going to be the only thing we're going to do for uh, our move phase. Uh, but now everything else happens. Um, no move. Uh, there is return. Okay. Uh, not return, uh, escort. Well, we need to check our escorts down here at below trailing. And a die roll yields up three. One escort is going to pop down to tail low. So, there he is. We'll try to avoid that little box now, won't we? All right, so there's no uh, recovery phase, no blasted flag. There is a cohesion phase, because we have one with one damage marker on it. We'd have to roll a one for it to loosen up that formation. And well, what do you know? We have a loosened formation, so... Uh, like so. All right. Uh, we cannot attack. No one is in an approach box. So what that means is we have moved to turn three tactical points. And guess what we's gonna do? It is time to attack. Well, we're gonna move into the attack position is what we mean. There is no return. There is no... There is an escort. And we must check this one right here. And we will... Uh, roll a six for this one. Uh, this guy is going to go flank level at the eight o'clock position. So he's flying flank level, eight o'clock position. Okay, well, the board is filling up with escort markers. That is not what we want. Um, no recovery, no blast and flak. We will roll for cohesion once again. Now it's up to a two. Yes, there are two elements right here. And almost, not quite. Okay, so we are finally at the attack phase. And here we go. Uh, pro tip. They have, there is this um, a guide or sequence of play. I highly recommend keeping that at hand, even after you're an expert. So you can just kind of check and make sure you're doing everything in the proper order and you won't confuse yourself. And the only thing I get confused on now is making sure I read the cards correctly and making sure I'm in the right zone and all that jazz. So we are from shifting fighters from the approach box to the bomber formation. Now we are not coming out of the sun and it makes sense to go after this bomber that already has damage on it. So that is exactly what we're gonna do, and so arrange these guys there, snap fingers, and there we are, all coming in. Now, here's where we start getting a little more pro in our thoughts and really kind of working the angles here. I want 
two, we got three fighters in the box, so we're going to have a collision check. But uh, we also have, because we have two from the same space, we're going to get the rot. Rote, I don't know how you pronounce it. So it makes, and those rotes have to be indetermined. So two of these should be in, uh, what you call it, uh, determined. And it makes sense to put one in evasive because when we do this collision check, the thing about the ch collision check is you look at it first and then you apply it to whichever fighter you want. So naturally, you since you're going to see what it does, you can kind of kind of tailor it so that you for minimal effects and, and so that's my kind of pro tip for the day uh so we have two underneath that are indetermined one that is in evasive and uh, let's see are we at the collision check yet yes we are now the other thing we have to remember is that that aaron's yes he is a flyer so when he draws he's this whole group anybody i guess triggers the collision check Flyer. He picks two, and he picks the one he wants. So we're gonna burn up that skill, and we're gonna pull out two of these guys, and choose one. So we got that one, and that's probably gonna be the one I'm taking. <laughs> or we have this one, and yes, we are gonna take that one. There will be no wait. Eh, let me think about this. Now, as far as I know, I do not see anything in the rules that says just because uh, Aaron's used his skill to choose two markers, that does not mean that that marker that he uh, has to be you uh, applied to him. Uh, in this case, we are going to do it anyway because uh, if it's indetermined, we're gonna leave this marker in the element and that helps with the cohesion, uh, wear down this cohesion, so we're gonna leave that there. Okay. Although if it's something bad and we wanted to play it to the evasion there, I don't see any reason. If anyone disagrees with me, let me know. I don't see anything in the rules that uh, forces uh, um, uh, the quick guy, the guy using the flyer skill to apply that uh, token to him. All right, for maneuvers, uh, the top guy is going to roll climb. And not a lot of hull and the escorts are making trouble for us. And the other two are just going to climb forward. We're going to go and try to get to the tail there and go out of the sun the next time if we can. Uh, so there's our maneuver. Couldn't help myself. I had to look up this proximity uh, thing I was talking about earlier and going back and forth about uh, whether you look at it or not. And actually in the play example under collision, the, uh, they state that this rule is per, uh, purposely left vague. Well, yeah, so it's it's up basically up to the player to decide whether they can look at him first or say, oh, it's this fighter, and then give him not you know a blind draw. And I guess it's the same with the flyer rule. It's it's also as vague as well. You know, I in design, I kind of wish they would say the official rule is this, and then then put under the option if you want to do blah blah blah. I wish I'd rather see that rather than just purposely leaving stuff vague. Uh, mostly because, you know, you got to sit there and, well, look around for it. And, 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 and then they have to, sp and only, in, only by looking at the example did I see the, the little note about it being vague. Oh, okay. So that's enough renting. I'm sorry. Checking of our advantage. We do have a rot advantage. All right. So now it is time for the attack. And, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna worry about the order. So we'll go ahead with the evasive guy up there. Now we have an element that's loose. Uh, this square it has a risk of danger level of two, so it's actually gonna be one with a minus one. And here we go with a nose attack, passive at level, or evasive at level. Uh, one, evasive level, oh man, we're gonna get shot at, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and burn up that, uh, that advantage to avoid, and there's a pass-through uh, rate of two, so he must move two. He is roll climbing, so he's going to go over here into the anchored flank. Ugh, puke. And a little reminder that we're level. Okay. All right, Aaron's nose determined uh, threat level one. Level. Uh, oh, 
two damage, but we run out of ammo in the process. Oh, I didn't like that. Okay. So, Aaron clamps down on his trigger with a white knuckle grip and empties his entire load into this bomber. And now he's out of ammo, but he does do two damage. So tell you what, Aaron, if you this damage downs this plane, all will be forgiven. If not, we're gonna have a little, some remedial trigger discipline when we get back. Yeah. All right. So first shot. Uh, one on the engine. Uh, eight or better to down it. Six. No. Uh, and one more. A wing. I hit a ten. It is blowed up. Nope. Well, we got four on the wing here, so that all goes there. All right, and he's it's pass through through of two, but you can only go that far. Okay. He's out of ammo. Okay. That leaves. Who's our guy in here? He's our dogfighter, so we can't really do anything. Knock him. Knock him. Comes rolling in. Oh, um, yeah. He goes straight through. He's climbing straight. All right, ready? Danger one. Nose level. Oh, really? Mm, okay. So hit, pass through two. So he's going to end up here with Aaron's but he's gonna take a hit and nothing I can do about that definitely not bad we pull oh seven cockpit not a good number okay now well, everyone has to take continuing fire we'll start with uh all of this guys and it's Unger uh the Anchored flank, so that's actually plus one for danger, so that's two, minus one is one. So one, innovative. Ah, miss power lead. Climb or climb rolling. At the result, the fighter switches to evasive node, then then breaks tw away to a tail low. But we're already in evasive. So you're gonna, oh, you're gonna go to tail low. No, don't do that. Okay, oh, wait a minute, which way is he going? Tail, well, it doesn't matter because he's going there. And he's going to end up. Well, it doesn't matter at this point. All right. Now we'll do knocking next. And the one, unfortunately, is another hit. That's no good. Come on, man. Um, if Green Pilot, he's not, so it's just a hit. Oh, we're getting slaughtered today. Uh, uh, this is not going the way the other one did. Uh, eight in the cockpit again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just gets worse and worse. Okay, he climbs up there. Uh, I kind of doubt he's going to last though. <laughs> and that leaves Aaron's with no ammo. And he uh, clears, I think. He's not bounced, nothing like that, so he's free. He's gonna go high. The evasive box. Hmm. We got troubles now. Okay, we're up to turn four. And everyone moves. Well, no, nobody moves because no one, everyone's in a return box or something else. And so then we go to the return phase. Unger comes here. Uh, Aaron's comes here. Found a lot of goodies of doing over there with no ammo. And now we're rolling on the escort table. I'm gonna do. Let's see. All right, I had to get the sequence of play there. Uh, first, we check the stations. There's only this one left, and nine puts him in above trailing. 
means he's going to be able to pounce on someone next turn. Boy, we've got to really consider leaving. All right. And this escort is going to hit that box. Well, what are these P38s? Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, rolling on the worst box possible. Down here on the bottom. A two. <laughs> there you go, into the dogfight box. Uh -huh. So, here we are at the recovery phase. <sighs> we got this guy. <laughs> Knocking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joy. Well. Oh, we need an eight or higher. Mm. Nope. So, the first one is just going to take him down. Uh, cockpit. They're both cockpit. It doesn't matter. So, we'll have to resolve their fate, at the, his fate, at the end of the mission. Cohesion phase. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Four. That is going to make it kaput. All right. Uh, not that they're going to be around to do anything about it. All right, so that is, there's no attacks, of course, and we are on to turn five. Well, there's nothing for it. He has no ammo. He's going to be absolutely useless, so he returns home. He exits. Okay, for turn five, there's no move. There's no return. There is escort. We will check the escort in the above trailing box. Five, box with least fighters. Boom. Again, the worst column there. Let's. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Knockin's fighter is destroyed. Going down. The question is, can he bail out? And we roll on this little box here. And six wounded. Okay, well, he's gonna get an experience point for that. But he goes to the wounded box. There are no more planes on the, on the, on the, in the formation. So the mission is officially over. The only thing left to ask is what happened to, uh, oh, oh um, yeah, what happened? Wait a minute. Who's in the dogfight box? Oh, it's Unger. Not knocking. I got the wrong guy. Okay. All right. What is his fate? Roll a die. A 10. Oh, nice. Lands. Woo. Living dangerous, buddy. Living dangerous. But he is alive. He lands his plane even. Right, we won't bill you then. <laughs> so. That leaves a snaffle erosion table. And we'll roll on this. Ooh, a 10. One pilot with expert skill may not fly the next mission. You know, I can pick anyone I want, but let's make this semi-thematic. The only guy that's been of any note has been knocking. He downed the only plane directly. And um, he also managed to get shot down, but managed or you know, shot out of the fight, but managed to land his plane, so we're going to allow him. He will not participate in the next mission. That is it for mission two. So, a little rough, but we are, the good news is, we are at three victory points after mission two. That's not a bad place to be. That's usually better than I usually am, but there you have it. Leave your comments, any errors you see, uh, questions. And thanks for watching and tune in next time for Mission 3.